So far, we've brought you an epic family saga, a comedic novel about a failed writer, an acclaimed memoir about growing up in rural Idaho. And this month, for Now Read This, our book club in partnership with The New York Times, a debut book that ranges from realism to folktale to sci-fi. Here's Jeffrey Brown. Twelve stories that move between the U.S. and Nigeria and between different styles, but always with vivid characters and writing that packs a punch. Our Now Read This book club pick for August was the story collection What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky. Author Leslie Neka Arima is here now to answer some of the questions our readers sent in. Welcome and thank you for being part of the book club. Thank you for having me. This is our first short story collection in the book club. And that's what our first question is about, so let's go right to that, okay? I'm intrigued by the difference between creating a novel and creating a book of short stories. When you were writing the stories, did you have a commonality in mind for them, and did that change as the stories took shape? Now, that's a good way of introducing a little bit about what you're up to here. When I was writing the short stories, I thought of them as their own individual entities. I was not consciously pairing or trying to um, have them connect to each other, but they all deal with the things that I'm curious about mm -hmm. in the world and the questions that I have about the world. And so that created that link between all of the stories. And different parts of your world, I mean, different places in your world? Yeah, so mostly, mm -hmm. yeah, mostly Nigeria and, and the United States. Um, and you know, both Nigeria of the past, present, and the speculative future. OK, so let's go to the next question. While writing this book, did you use personal experiences and or stories from people you know? If so, was writing this book cathartic for you? I think because I write about young Nigerian women, um, the readers often assume that I'm writing about mm -hmm. myself and writing autobiographical work. But all of the stories, you know, they they were they're all imagined, with the exception of one. Yeah. Um, the with the war stories, uh, where the father tells the daughter the stories about when he was in the army. Um, I, I borrowed my father's stories that he told me. That was, and, I mean, that was one of my favorites. So I mean, to fill that in a little bit, because that's a a young woman and her father sort of slowly yes. so this, unreeling his yeah. story. Yeah. A, you know, a, a girl who um, might have a few behavioral issues and sort of causing fights at school. Yeah. And at home, um, her father is, uh, you know, this older Nigerian man who's been shell-shocked by the Biafra War. Yeah. And he copes with this by telling her stories about um, his experiences. And um, and those stories were my father's stories. Um, I, you know, I, I exaggerated the last one a bit, mm -hmm. just, you know, for, for um, story effect. But those were his stories. It was sort of very gratifying that he um, understood what I was doing and liked what I had sort of turned his stories into. It's a family story, but embedded in history. Yeah. The ways in which, um, like, our past traumas inform our present selves, like, I'm really interested in how that manifests. And you are everything that has happened to you leading up to this very moment. Mm -hmm. And how has those experiences, how have they shaped you? How have they, um, you know, sort of contoured the way that you think and the way that you view the world and other people? Okay, let's go to our next question from one of the readers. Many of your stories focus on the weight of societal expectations, especially on young women. Why did you choose to highlight this theme? There are a lot of sort of social rules that women are supposed to follow, women and girls are supposed to follow, at least in sort of my own experience of um, growing up in Nigeria. And I wanted to, I wanted to talk about it. And I wanted to interrogate the many different ways that um, we are sort of pressure, you know, putting pressure yeah. and that sort of creates, creating these false shapes of, of womanhood and girlhood and what it does to the people who, who live through that. But without being particularly autobiographical, you say? No, but, but yeah. still things that I think about, right? right? Like the events aren't autobiographical, yeah. but the, like, like the emotion is like, you know, you mine, as a writer, you mine your insecurity, or at least you should, because, you know, we all, we're all humans in the world. We know, how to, we know how that works. Okay, let's go to the next question. What would you like your readers to take away from the stories? And the feedbacks you've received so far, are they in line with your intended message? Thank you. I don't write fiction with like 
a message in that I don't want the stories to feel like, you know, a very special episode of, you know, um, you know a day in this girl's life and what lessons can be learned. Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of didactic instructional writing is not something that, that appeals to me. I'm more interested in um, sort of conjuring up a person, you know, like you're spinning a person out of, out of, out of nothing, mm -hmm. and how, like, who are they? What, what are the particular idiosyncrasies that they have? What makes them them? Mm -hmm. Because I sort of have my own concerns about the way the world is, is shaped and the condition of the world now, of course, there are lessons that could be learned, right. but I don't write with that intention. I, I, I let the stories sort of live, live on their own. All right, so we're gonna continue our conversation with uh, questions from our readers, and we'll put all of that online and on our Facebook page. For now, Leslie Neka Arima, thank you for being part of this. Thank you. And before we go, I want to announce our selection for September, Earning the Rockies, How Geography Shapes America's Role in the World. It's a short but powerful and provocative book by Robert Kaplan. It's a mix of road trip, memoir, history, and political analysis of where we've been and where we are today. I've been reading it this summer with great pleasure, and I hope you will, too, in our Now Read This Book Club, a partnership with The New York Times. And you can join us, some 60,000 members, and growing on our Facebook page. And run to the bookstore to get that book.